All right, let's not waste any time. First of all, this is a part two. I posted the first part of the timeline last week. So if you want to see the rules I established or me talking about the two eras that I've gone through in depth, then check out the I card in the corner, please. But for a quick summary, the two main rules I have established is that I won't add every little thing into the timeline, which is especially true for the outside world affecting the world of Lucid Adventure. And that I would split the timeline into six different eras. Mainly because we're not sure if the lore of the game actually happened or if it was just written in. We went through two eras last time. The Genesis era, which is when the game itself was created and the events leading up to it. And an era that I called the lore era. But one of my commenters suggested the written era. Which, I'm gonna be frank, is way better. So thank you, Silent Storm. Anyways, the written era dealt mainly with the lore of the game, the heroes, the knights, the thorn king, and other things, so I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to jump into an era that we haven't heard a lot about, the beta era. The beta era is probably the era we know the least about, and we really only have one person to thank for this era even being known, ARMS. ARMS is one of the very few people to be a beta tester. We've only really seen it mentioned twice, first in a flashback of the Zara Guild downfall, we see Nightmare Arms go against Giga members, and one of them says, so, she really was one of the 10 beta testers. And that's really all we got. Well, until AE number two, we hear Arms talk about it to Master Swordsman. She says, I've never told this to anyone, but I used to be a closed beta tester. I participated in the second one. I wasn't the kind of tester you'd normally expect. It was more experiment with all sorts of people. Fortunately, there wasn't any side effects. They were mostly patients diagnosed with terminal illnesses or people on their deathbed. Giga needed to make sure that their game was safe to play. They needed to make sure that everyone who logged on could log off and be fine. So they did two rounds of beta testing, selecting people who were about to die or very close to dying just to make sure that A, if something did happen, it wouldn't affect the people who would still lead lives, and B, to actually get people to play this crazy game that sounds like it would kill you. The other strange part is the one of 10 beta testers. Were there 10 beta testers in total? Or was it per test? She said she participated in the second one. So there were two tests done, each with a handful of very ill people. Most of them died, not for any of the reason of the game, just because that's where their life was headed. Many of them not living to see the game even being released. But we know that one does, and she leads us into the next era, the Alpha Era. The Alpha Era basically starts when all the players start going into the game. This era has all the moments that say two years ago or one year ago, and it happens in game. First, we can safely say the first event is the establishment of the Giga Guild. They were the creators of the game itself, so it makes sense that their guild were the first ones to be, you know, established. Then comes Zero. You see, I was definitely debating putting Zero's betrayal at the beginning of this era, or even putting it before the Genesis era. However, there are a handful of things that made me consider putting Zero's betrayal here. First, the God of War tells Grandpa Dark that Zero is trying to find a way to kill him. The God of War isn't created until the beginning of the written era, but also it's how Zero turns. You see, the only way to make the game feel more real was for Zero to take information from the real world and apply it to this world. This is why she turned. If you haven't checked out my video on Zero, then let me break it down real simple. Zero saw the real world and she became fearful. She was afraid that the humans would destroy the world of Lucid Adventure like they're destroying the real world. Which, let's be frank, is probably what we would have done anyways. But she didn't just research the real world through the internet. She took information from the players who logged in. However, she couldn't have taken information from these players if there were no players. So the start of Zero's betrayal begins with Zero granting Sam Han the special personal attribute Oedipus, giving him the power to kill dear old dad. This was really just insurance, 
just in case her plan to kill Grandpa Dark didn't work. She creates Nightmare, and she tries to use it to kill Grandpa Dark. This doesn't work, and she knew it wouldn't. Her plan was to cause the Nightmare to spread and to destroy Grandpa Dark's core, the thing that holds the world in balance. She destroys hers and corrupts his, causing the world to start to decay. Our next point is probably the part we know literally nothing about, and it's really only mentioned in passing, and it's not even the focus of the conversation. All right, you see, right before the combat tournaments, the PvP rounds, Dark starts complaining that he's not strong enough. Then Eason suggests an item draw, a gotcha. An item that has a chance of giving you a rare and powerful divine item. Or might, you know, destroy a country? Anyways, when Dark asks if anyone has used one of these before, Heart Eater explains. Sure there were. Ancus, one of the few powerful guilds of early days, the first discoverers of Gotcha, destroyed. Everything that that guild had was completely incinerated. So it's possible that the earliest guild aside from Giga was this Ancus one. They were so strong, strong enough to find the first Gotcha, even before Giga. However, they weren't lucky and they got destroyed, disbanding one of the earliest guilds. This leads into the Zara Guild. We don't really know much about the early days of the Zara Guild. One of the very few beta testers survived through into this time. Arms founds the Zara Guild, gaining the ranks of Master Swordsman and others. During the rise of the Zara Guild, Ethan goes into debt and is forced to work for President Kim, forcing him to play Lucid Adventure to pay off his debts, leading Ethan to join the Zara Guild. The Zara Guild was strong, likely one of the very few guilds that could surpass Giga. So Giga stepped in, asking President Kim to make one of his employees cause the guild to fall. Constance takes one of the pieces of Nightmare and makes it seem like the entire guild is cheating. This makes Giga's security task force take down most of the guilds and make a deal with arms. In exchange for the lives of her guild members, she would give up the pages of her book and leave the game forever and she accepts the deal. The Zara Guild would soon fall due to improper leadership. However, it didn't stop most of the players of the guild to still look for her. During this time, there was a guild that became even bigger of a problem. The Guild Nightmare would rise to power, becoming the number one guild in the world. They worshiped the Nightmare and gained power from it. As Webtoon put it, Guild Nightmare wanted to destroy everything in Lucid Adventure World. Whether it be a player, the world itself, Nightmare gaining power from destruction destroys everything. However, there were those who opposed them, those who stood in their way, those who wanted to keep the world of Lucid Adventure safe. They formed the Allied Nations. The very first player war commenced. All these nations against the Nightmare Guild. Giga, Yopai Land, other smaller ones, the members of the now gone Zara Guild, and rising through the ranks during this time was a player using bets to steal other players' stats and skills. Ethan would become third ranked during the war, later destroying a nightmare base and rescuing one person, Sora. Meanwhile, during this time, Rigos, the Archfiends, gains the help of Nightmare and challenges the God of War. However, this doesn't work. He fails to beat the God of War and is imprisoned. And a little later, the Archfiend L.E. Lazzy would lose in a duel with Zero to become imprisoned without his horns. After much fighting, the very first player war would end, with the Allied Nations winning against the Nightmare Guild, causing them to go idle. However, they faced many casualty and damages and would take much time for everything to get repaired. After some time, the God of War became bored and created combat tournaments, where players would go into four rounds to get a god item, sparking a lot of controversy and shadiness. And finally, the man who steals from everyone would become the number one ranked player, becoming an enemy to all. And that ends the Alpha Era, probably the longest era when it comes to important events. And next is the Era of Darkness. The Era of Darkness has the most little details 
that aren't necessary to explain. It's really just the story of the first chapter. Beginning with the fall of the strongest player, Ethan, getting targeted by multiple players, then Zero herself. The old number one ranked player Ethan would later get hired by Dark to help him level up. This causes Ellie Lazzy to get unsealed and become a servant to Dark. The next real important thing is the start of the combat tournaments, the final combat tournaments, with Team Dark somehow getting through many of the rounds, all while Zero lurks in the background, killing off players and creating weapons powerful enough to kill Grandpa Dark. Soon enough, the Archfiend Rigos would be unsealed and defeated by a rewinded Ethan. This all leads to a close call with war. The nightmares have been on the rise again, stealing Pua Pu and others, all while Giga invades Yopai land, trying to take care of Grandpa Dark, which almost leads to war, but is stopped by the gods. Grandpa Dark is dying and wants to choose one of the gods to make the Almighty One, using the combat tournament as a wager to see who would win, who would become the Almighty One. During this darkest, one of the original heroes was brought back into the human world, and the PvP tournament's final combat starts. During the combat tournament, Team Dark must go to the Dragon of Evil and complete the Trial of the Dragon, being one of very few to complete it, which gives them the title of Heroes, or as the Dragon of Evil puts it, Cursed Heroes. Finally, the last round of the PvP round starts, with Team Dark versus Team Light. The Team Dark comes out on top. After they win, Grandpa Dark soon passes away, which leads to Zero to kill the God of Blessing disguised as the God of Death, to then fight the God of War and the God of Time and Space, killing multiple players and creating nightmare doppelgangers. Soon, all the players are teleported out of there, and the God of War and the God of Time and Space have zero pins. However, they are all killed off by Yopai, taking their powers and spreading it across the land, giving the power to the people. Ending the Age of Darkness and thrusting us into the Godless Era. Alright, let me quickly run through the Godless Era. It's not too much time since it's really only the short amount of episodes we get in Chapter 2 and some of the AEs. We start with the death of the gods, rushing in a new system for the game. These Team Rocket looking balls. They're all new ways to do things that they can no longer do without the gods, like duels, ranks, and bets and rewards. However, they do have a special use. They make a player sleepwalk, to do things against their will in the real world, which is absolutely awful. I mean, really, who? Okay, whatever. After this, a new kingdom is formed, Darkland, and starts growing at a very fast rate. Meanwhile, our good old friend, the god killer, Yopai, had a change of heart, grouping up with the four guilds of Misfit to create a new alliance, the Anti Giga Coalition. Also, the Nightmare Doppelgangers have decided to join the game and start their own guild with no name as their leader. She gains the support of demons and even normal players and becomes a major threat, taking down a Giga stronghold. Some other notable guilds start to pop up due to the god's death. The gods provided a barrier of sorts, and without the barrier, the world of Lucid Adventure started to grow due to the Lucid that's around it. Due to this, multiple guilds have started to rise up and claim land. We mainly get this information due to episode 9 of season 2. Giga remains on top, which isn't surprising. But what is surprising is the Dragon of Light grants powers to another guild. You know how the Dragon of Evil granted the titles of Cursed Heroes to Team Dark? Well, it's kind of like that. The Elixir Plant Guild has been granted powers of the Dragon of Light. And that's really all that matters. We see little things like... Them trying to find Ethan, but nothing too major. You see, I didn't want to make this a three-parter, so it's a little bit longer than normal. And the Alpha Arrow is really long because it's just a bunch of backstory. But anyways, if you think I missed something, please let me know. I'll add it in the comments. And who knows, I might need another timeline soon. Also, Halloween is coming up. Should I make a Halloween special after Halloween? Because it's going to be November 1st when it comes out. Or the week before. I already have a video in mind. 
let me know, please. And like always, thank you for watching.